Master Music Show. It's the Murder Master Music Show. Yo, Fred. It's the Murder Master Music Show. Man, Jay. It's the Murder Master Music Yo, Show. Life.com. It's the Murder Master Getting Music Show. The beat. It's the Murder Master Music Show. It's the Murder Master Gallup Music Show. Seven. It's the murder master they used to say Hip hop is dead, but we don't resurrect it You follow what mainstream says, but here it gets rejected If you wearing tight jeans, don't expect to get respected I'm from a time where wearing black was always on your checklist From a time where faggots get checked if they reckless From a time where if you got too much shine, we snatch your necklace This real shit here, Illuminati, fuck the industry We represent the street and they respect our street ministries Hate no shorts and cut the middleman, literally this Hip hop savior, our birth scenes like nativity. This is a place where no one sells out for relevability. And the masses can get a chance to explore more creativity. You gotta be kidding me. If you call that hip hop, niggas with my shades and fluorescent flip flop. We kill a big brother, cause we know he watch. You don't like what I'm doing, then you can suck mine. Oh, and it's you the don't murder die. Master music show. It's the murder 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 Master Music Show. Episode 263, it is the Murder Master Music Show. Um, <clears throat> we got a special guest in the building tonight. Uh, we, well, we always do. Every week we try to have somebody on here, uh, you know what I'm saying, that brings something to hip-hop, that has brought something to hip-hop. Um, this man, you know, he does both. Of course, uh, you remember him, clientele. He's actually one of the former bandmates of Dr. Dre and... Uh, DJ Yellow of NWA, um, when he was part of the World Class Wrecking Crew. Eventually, of course, you know that group broke up. He started doing his own thing. He also became a filmmaker along the way. Um, he's going to talk about all kinds of different things. He's, of course, he's uh, part of the Universal Hip Hop Museum, which uh, is is what we're all about. They're trying to do it real fucking big, the preservation of hip hop as a whole. You know, um, all the elements, not just, uh, you know, trendy records that sold millions and millions of copies. They're trying to actually preserve the roots of it all, you know what I'm saying, and give you, actually give you guys a a visual um, while you're going to check out the museum. But he's also, uh, he's got some big news to tell us. I'm just going to bring him on and he's going to tell it to you himself. One and only clientele. How you doing, clientele? What up, man? How's it going? Man, man, always, always an honor to have you on the show. Um, and uh, yeah. every time we have you on the show, you you got some more news to tell us. And it looks like you got some real big news to tell us right now. What's what's oh, the happening, man? What's been going on with you, Mark? Well, absolutely, man. And you know, first of all, I just want to thank you guys uh, uh, for uh, you know all the support. And, you know, and all the, the, the backing and staying authentic and staying true to hip-hop, staying true to the culture. And, and really, you know, you guys are no nonsense, you know, and, and, and you, you, you really break it down for the people. Because, you know, I, before I even get into, you know, the projects and the things that, that are going on and that we're doing with uh, you know, the museum and then also eventually with some other projects, um, you know, I just want to say that... <clears throat> In this new era, you know, of social media and and how information travels so fast and, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of fuck shit out there that travels and, you know, you need people to kind of be able to sift through all that and make sense and and, and get up and and get a give a perspective on it where people who are truly hip hop understand really what hip hop is, because a lot of times, you know, generations pass and you know, money gets thrown into situations. A lot of times people, they forget from one generation to the next. You kind of lose certain elements or they get pushed underground, you know what I mean, about hip-hop. But 
to have forums like this and have radio shows, you know, and, and people like you and, and, and Mac and what y'all do, man, is awesome. It's, it's, it's really, you know, something that uh, generations to come will appreciate. Trust me. Um, but having said that, man, you know, it, it's really man, much about. Yeah, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. And, and, and again, I think you guys really captured the true spirit. You know what hip hop is. It ain't. It's not always about the bling. It's not always about the money. It's not always about you know, you know how many records you sold or, or how many you know streams you had. All that shit. You know that that's gonna come. You know when the machine gets behind you. It's really about this culture you know that we live in and, and we share, and you know something that's able to change lives. And that's really you know what we're about. So you know that's that's really what's up, man. And, and having said that. Um, you know, I just want to talk a little bit briefly about some of the projects that we're working on and some of the things that we're doing that are really major that could really bring hip hop into a whole new era, you know, and, and really push it into a whole nother future. There's there's things that are happening, you know, behind the scenes um, with with this new age of technology that a lot of people really don't have a full grasp of. Some people do, but a lot of people don't. And, you know, hip-hop has always been on the cutting edge. We've always taken something and, and, you know, really virtually nothing and made it into something. And that's just the spirit of what we do, you know. And, and having said that, um, I'm working with a lot of cool people. But the major, major uh, thing that I want to talk about, you know, first and off the bat is, um, you know, we're, we're doing uh, this, this program called 16 Bars to Hip-Hop. You know, that's not the big, big news, but this is just I'm going to go through a couple of things. Then I will get to that. Um, but we're doing this thing called uh, 16 Bars for Hip Hop for the uh, Universal Hip Hop Museum. And basically what it is is we're asking MCs to to uh, donate 16 bars for a compilation for mixtape to uh, the Hip Hop Museum to help to promote the museum. And if they want to do that, and they want to get a little more insight on what it is about. It's really about putting together MCs from all over the world to really, you know, be down with the compilation and get on board and be represented all over the world. And so far, man, we've gotten over, you know, 40, you know, something odd submissions already in just in the past couple of days that we've, you know, released the, wow. uh, the you know, yeah, the program. So um, all they have to do to get involved is they go to SoundCloud. They can submit their stuff to SoundCloud with a hashtag. 16, the number 16, um, four bar, uh, 16 bars, B-A-R-S, the number four, and then hip-hop. They can hashtag it that, or they can hashtag it, hashtag U-H-H-M as in Mary, right? And either one of those will link it to the, the program that the, the Universal Hip Hop Museum is doing for hip-hop. And you're going to be surprised already to see some of the MCs and some of the artists that are already attached to that and that are already participating. is real cool you know, when you go there. So See, that's, that, that, that's beautiful. That's what's needed yeah. right now. You well, know, you know um, we, look, a lot of people think, okay, you know, it's a museum. All right, it's going to be a bunch of these old school niggas, you know, trying to, you know, get their old school, you know, reminisce. No, it's not about that. It's a museum to protect, preserve, and promote the culture of hip hop. And when I and that last part is is very important is to promote the culture. Meaning we're reaching, you know, generations, you know, back, but we're also reaching generations forward and we're reaching out to new artists, to new MCs, to young artists, to fresh artists, to dope artists, to different kinds of people from all over the world to be involved because one day they're gonna want their legacy you know, to be enshrined and recorded for history yeah. and, and for posterity's sake. So it's not it's not a mausoleum, it's not a crypt where we keep an old stuff. And you know, even though you know I'm a first generation, second generation hip hop artist, I still rock with the new cats because there's a lot of stuff that is a lot of people don't get a chance to hear. You know, it's, so it's like the National is, Library of Congress for hip hop. It's it's it embodies pretty much everything, but uh. Clientel, we got a, a caller on the line right now. I'm going to let uh, this caller introduce him or herself. Go okay. ahead, speak, caller. Right. Yes, hi. Um, much respect to everybody. This is MC Shah Rock. I'm, I am the first female MC of hip-hop culture, and I'm Word glad. Up. I'm so glad. Hey, guys, I'm so glad to be a part of this show and just listening to y'all talk about the importance of the Universal Hip-Hop Museum, you know, is really 
crazy, and, and it's something that's universal. It does not belong to the Bronx or to, uh, you know, New York. You know, this is something for everybody around the world to participate in, and it does, and it will solidify the legacy of people past, present, and future. Oh, yeah, I, I, I agree, uh, uh, MC Sharak, with you completely, because um, in 2011, I put out a compilation and we had 15 different countries represented on there. So mm. it spread. I mean, we had everything from uh, Zimbabwe to Macedonia, you know, to Egypt, and then back to Czechoslovakia. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. It's everywhere. Hip-hop has yeah, affected that's awesome. the globe, and it's a, it's a good thing what you guys are doing with this hip-hop museum. But but it's basically what we're all doing. A clientele, you sit on the board, you know. So the thing is, is that, yeah. you know, it's all of us to make sure – that this happened, and as I stated before, you know, I, I'm the first female MC of the hip-hop culture, but it's not about me. It's not, it's not about, you know, just one single person. It's about every person that hip-hop has affected them in some way, whether or not you're a B-girl or B-boy, you're a DJ, you're a turntablist, you, you, you are, you know, you are involved in hip-hop in any way. These, this is what we're trying to do to make sure that we preserve the history of, of many, you know, to come. And in and, and, and retrospect, you know, you know, other places have museums and they, they hold artifacts about the history. You know, you have, you know, the Smithsonian, you know, then you have, uh, you know, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But hip-hop does not have a home. And this will be a home for everybody around the world, you know, to be able to say, listen, I'm a part of this. I made this happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And 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 Shyrock, you guys got something coming up uh in June, right? Yes. Let, let me explain to your audience. I sit on the board, the University Hip Hop Board as the chairperson for the women's division. And um Rocky Buchanan came to me and asked that I serve as the chairperson, you know, in, in reference to preserving the history of women in hip hop. And I jumped on the idea simply because I think it's very important for women you know, history to be preserved because what I would like to say, you know, to every female that's out there that may be listening, that may be into entertainment or they may, you know, uh, is involved in hip-hop heavily, we as women have been on the front line from the beginning. It's not like we just came into the game and you just hear about, you know, the onset of hip-hop in the 80s. The women were there from the beginning carrying the crates you know, hooking up the speakers, you know, uh, hooking up the lampposts, you know, uh, taking the trains, DJing from the beginning, from the 70s. And it's very important that we as women be able to preserve the history and say, look, we fought for hip-hop to be where it is today. We are just as as important to hip-hop as the guys are because we were on that front line fighting for hip-hop to be what it is today. And this is why on June 3rd, well, actually, it's a three-day, uh, three-day event. On June 3rd through, through June 5th, I'm, the Women's Board is having uh, a celebration for women all around the world. And so what I did was I reached out to every MC that you could even possibly um, know, you know, from, from old to new to present to past, every MC. Now, we couldn't, get, we couldn't get everybody to attend, but we're still hoping that, you know, the females will attend. We have a lot of people coming from California. We got Silky D coming from California. We got O-Town 357, one of the members from O-Town 357 coming, D Barnes coming. Uh, we got Medusa coming. So we have a lot of different people from California. Then we have them, you know, coming from Philadelphia, and we have them coming from uh, Maryland, from all over the world to participate in this event and us celebrating, you know, the women. You know, you have like your – your, your black girls rock, or you may have, you know, different organizations that, you know, may, you know, uh, you know, put women in the forefront. But never, you know, in this time where you have something that celebrate, we're all in one room and we're celebrating the accomplishments of all the women in one place. So we're going to have that on June 3rd in New York City. Lady B, which is, you know, uh, uh, a, a past, you know, she, she, she's a DJ, but she's the one that really, like, broke all the rap records you know, back in the 70s for people such as myself or, you know, uh, the Sugar Hill Gang and all that. She's going to be the one that's hosting. Then on Saturday we have the Women's Forum where we have, you know, different people that will speak. You know, some some of them is going to speak that set on. I think they were somewhere involved with the, with Death Row. They're coming out to speak on the entertainment business as well. And um, it's a free event on Saturday, and then we're going to have the picnic on Sunday. 
for, you know, everybody to just come out and just mingle and just have fun. So it's going to be an awesome, an awesome weekend. We're going to have um, DJ Cool Hurt, which is the father of hip-hop, that's going to come out and support, you know, the women. And we have uh, Chuck D, you know, that's that's coming, DMC that's coming, Cuban Link that's coming. You know, um, DJ Cool is going to set it off. You know, so we have a lot of different people that's, that's going to come out and perform. Bahamadia is going to be there, Sparky D. A lot of old and a lot of new. Star Rock is going to be there. So we're excited about it, and we wish that y'all can come out too. I know it, it's kind of crazy at the last minute clientele, but we wish y'all can, you know, be able to come out and Thank support us. Thank you for well. sending that uh, invite. You know, that's definitely, yeah. if not us, I'm sure we got somebody in that area. Uh, that sounds like it's going to be, I mean, what I'm digging is you guys are planning all these different events, all these different things that's going on. I mean, and you guys are executing everything perfectly. Yes, uh, yes. What kind of pressure, though, is it for you guys to be under? Well, Knowing to what, me, what hip hop. Well, to me, what we did was basically, if you're talking about the event, what we did was basically took it back to the street with guerrilla marketing. You know, with flyers, with letting people know that listen, you know, it's not about you coming in a Backward certain fashion started. or form. Right. We we just took it back to the streets and let people know, listen, you come as you are. This is about hip hop. This is about caring. You know, music. You know, celebrating women. We just want you to come and enjoy. Now. For, for people that can't make it out to California, you know, they're they going to come. They're going to pay like a $50, but we're donating, you know, some of the money to the University Hip Hop Museum. But at the same time, they get to eat and drink all they want for the drinkers that, that's out there. So we're actually setting like a good environment, but also a fun environment where we're going to have good music. You know, they're coming out and dancing. They're going to see performance perform, performances by the women, and we just really just took it old school. So there was no pressure, not when you're doing something that you love and you don't make it about money-based, and it's something that you yeah. love and money is not the, the, the key to everything, but when you're doing it because you love it, there's no pressure involved because all you want to do is see all them women in one place making it happen. So there there is no pressure. Is no pressure. Well, it's it's actually fun, yeah. That's good. That's good. They, you know, it's good to see that. Like you said, money can sometimes ruin a lot of things, mm-hmm. and um, we've seen we've seen a lot of fractures in hip hop throughout the uh, years because of money. A lot of groups split up. Yes. A lot of labels yes. disbanded, whatnot. So yeah, it's a good thing to have people come together and just, like you said, just kick it, have a right. good time. There, um, there's no pressure. No pressure, especially when you have when it, when it's money driven. You know, then it's like you have another, you have a motive. But when it's something that you, you know. do because you want and you want to see it happen, then it becomes fun. It, 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 and that's when the pressure is taken off of you because it's about seeing all the women together in one place. Definitely, definitely. Yes. What about um, what about clientele? Uh, what's the latest thing? Now, you were talking about this 16-bar challenge uh, talk a little yes. bit more about that. Let the people know about that. Well, well, yeah, it, it, well go, go yeah, ahead, Clientel. Go ahead. You, you finish. Go ahead. Well, it's not really a, a challenge so much as it is a compilation of just a representation of MCs, you know, coming together from around the world to be on a project to support, you know, the museum and to support, you know, one of the, you know, important elements of, of hip-hop, man. And, and it's mm-hmm. really, you know, we're, like I said, we're trying to really look, reach out to, a lot of artists, you know, in a diverse, you know, uh, group of people in terms of who they are and where they're from and all that, and give them an opportunity really to showcase their talents and uh, let them know that, hey, we, we support what, what we're doing, what you're doing. Exactly. And and that's what hip-hop is about. It's about supporting, you know, the artists, the up-and-coming artists, you know, um, and, and letting people know that, listen, you know, this is out here. This is universal. It's not just about one state or, or city you know, a, a country, this is about all of us coming together to support a home for hip-hop, you know. And so this, this 16 bars would allow the artist to be able to, you know, showcase their talents and at the same time, you know, support the Universal Hip-Hop Museum. Yeah, and it'll be on iTunes and people can download it and, and, and yes. rock with it. And I've, I've heard some of the samples of some of the MCs and it's dope. All right, it's dope. So... And, and, and it's gonna get it's gonna get crazier, you know, because once the word is put out, and like what you're doing now, you know, clientele, what y'all doing is actually, you know, informing the audience that listen, y'all can do this. You're an artist. You want to be a part of it. 
send your stuff in, you know, send your music in, and then we'll go from there. So I think it's 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 a good thing for everybody, you know, to make sure that they sort of kind of, you know, participate in making this a dream come true and at the same time allowing people to hear their craft as well. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and again, oh, yeah. plus – you get some authentication. You know, you, you it's not just you're not just out there. You have the backing. You're gonna have the backing of the people who who know hip hop the best. Plain and simple. True. So it's all love, man. It's, it's all it's all good. And and uh, yeah. So it's just a, a few other things that that we're doing that I wanted to talk about and and kind of inform people of. Um, one of the things that just started uh, two weeks ago at uh, Monroe College in the Bronx is uh, we actually started a, a, an accredited college course called yes. uh, Who, Set, Who Set You Flowing, and that is going to be, uh, a, you know, taught by two, the, the two people on the, on the phone right now, myself and MC Shy Rock. We're going to do uh, yes. uh, guest lecturing and also with uh, Paradise Gray and Cutman LG and uh, Dr. Tanya Gilliam. And if I'm forgetting anybody, Aren't I do Aren't you excited apologize. about that? Aren't you I'm excited? I'm very excited. I mean, come on, man. We we get the, we get a chance to actually teach a course where people can actually earn credits, college credits, exactly for exactly. you know us sharing this knowledge and sharing in this passion, you know that we have. So it's it's a beautiful thing, man. So I'm looking forward to coming in. I, I think I'll be there uh, June seventh. That that's my uh, day to guest lecture. That's the day. We'll, we'll, wow, we did yeah, we'll, this. yeah, yeah. Okay, when are you going to be there? You're going to be there. Uh... Well, well, I'm 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 um going to be there. Uh, well, well, I haven't got the date yet for um, you know, the college because I, okay. I I think she's trying to really hold off and waiting for the time because I'll just be finishing up with with um you know the the oh, event right, right the women's uh, event. Uh, yeah. But I'm That's glad right. that you you you'll go ahead and you're starting it off because it's going to be awesome, especially coming from your perspective. And and I'm excited yeah. that you are part of it. And you're going to be teaching. You know, a class, and when I heard about that, I was like, "Man, this is great! This is something that you yeah. can be a proud of." You know, you, you can yeah. really be a proud yeah. of. Yeah, so I'm, I'll be covering, um, you know, early West Coast, the beginning of West Coast hip hop, all the way to uh, Kendrick Lamar. So, uh, it's and, and it's important. Fun. It's important because, you know, I always had so much respect for Cali because it was like Cali brought, you know, a whole different, you know form and style, you know, to the game. And it's very important that even the history of, of Cali be spoke about, you know, and, and told, you know, and, and so people could be understand that, look, this is this is where it started from, you know, and when we have, Cali have their own history as well, you know, and I think that it's very important that, you know, th- these things be taught than just what they may see on, like, the internet or they may be, get, they may get bits and pieces. They will be able to understand you know what? What the true essence of of Cali and the MCs? You know through your oral perspective, and and I'm excited about that. Yeah, and, and you oh, know yeah. not not to put not to put any professors down or anybody who's students, you know, of hip hop down. But we are the people who lived it and breathed it. Thank we you. were there in the beginning, so we we're able to we we're able to share our stories in a Thank way you. that is unique. You know, and and like I said, that's 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 unprecedented. It's that's real. Not, it's real. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So well, I'm looking forward done, to that. Like uh, you said earlier, um, all these other genres of music, they have their award shows and this, this, and that, their Hall yes. of Fames. Uh, hip-hop doesn't have that. You know, it, it had, like, the Source Awards and different things of that nature, but that all but that dissipated. But not a place. It, it, right. it, yeah, it needs a home, like you said, a permanent uh, permanent facility, you know, both and virtual a permanent facility that's and, gonna and house. real. Exactly. That's going to house the history of every major city that's out there, not just New York. You know, and I don't want to say who cares because it started in the Bronx. Okay, we all know that. But the thing is, is that you have many different states and cities that has contributed to hip-hop throughout the years. And this information needs to be retained and it needs to be preserved. And this is why it's very important that we have people like, you know, y'all involved in Universal Hip Hop Museum and the teachings of of you know the different cities and states, you know, to let to inform people that was really there that actually know what happened and what did went down and how do we get from point A to people like Kendrick Lamar, you know, and so it's it's an exciting thing for all of us, you know, and for hip hop, I should say. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, man. And oh, you yeah, know, we're, we're also we're also I also wanted to uh, just mention the event we just had, which is the Design Cipher, uh, just last month, 
where we got yeah, I, uh, I saw a, that. Man, yeah. a group of, you know, folks together from all over the country, architects and students and, and, and hip hop heads and, and everybody, man, came together to actually put together a design for the museum. Mm. They all participated. They all it, it came from like one hive mind, you know what I mean? And and now what what the architects are doing is they're putting together a rendering, a three D rendering model for the actual museum based on a lot of the recommendations and the drawings and suggestions that were uh, taken, you know, from uh, those groups of people. So historical stuff is happening in the spirit mm-hmm. of hip hop and, and, you know, and, and it's really the momentum is really picking up and, and uh, right. you know, it's, it's going forward in a really positive I, way. So, yeah, I, I wasn't able to make that, but just to see, you know, the information that, that was put out on Facebook and to see y'all there and just making it happen, that's like a wonderful feeling because it's like you're carrying the torch, you know, to make sure that this dream becomes a, a reality, you know, and just to see y'all making it happen, I mean, that, that was historical in itself, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anytime you absolutely. get people together like that and you're able to do something constructive for for a common cause, I mean, that's that's, that's mm-hmm. a beautiful thing. Because, you know, you've yeah. got to look at a lot of young kids nowadays they don't have the direction, you know, so it's it's going to take people like y'all to show them, you know, and, and right. uh, I really commend you guys for the work you're doing because uh, it needs to be done. It really does. Right, and, and, and it's so crazy because, you know, it's like, okay, we, and, more, and, and the clientele, you know the deal. You know, you feel like, say, okay, you know, with the young kids, they don't get it, they don't understand, they don't do this and this and that. But the thing is, is that we can't blame them. What we have to do is give them something to work with. If they don't have an oral history and they, they don't know how do they get from point A to point B, then how do we blame them for whatever actions that we or, 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 or one may think that's not, that, that they should be held accountable? Give them something to work with. Show them, you know, okay, this is what, what it was for and this is how it is now. And this is how you can better your craft, you know, by learning from others or by seeing where did it get to point, to, you know, from point A to point B instead of just, saying, well, you know, why they're not doing this, why they're not You give them something to work with. And with the University Hip Hop Museum, this would allow, the, you know, for, for, you know, the younger generation to be able to see, listen, this is how it all started. You understand what I mean? And this is where you can begin to carry on the torch, you know, in a way where, you know, it should really, like, solidify, you know, the, the culture and what hip hop truly stands for and all the elements that that's are involved. So I'm, I'm very That's excited cool. about it. Yeah, e- each one teach one. You know what I'm saying? Each yes. one teach one. That's what that it's all so about. That's so true. Yeah, so, true. you know. you got a lot of things. I mean, you're doing a lot of things here. Uh, I mean, both of you. Um, and recently, clientele, you got something going on real big that you were going to share with us. I'm going to let you do that because uh, I don't want to give it away. But tell the people what you got going on. Well, it, it's really a... Um, a venture that um, we had been working on for a while now, several months, and we just signed a, a partnership deal to aggregate, uh, to produce, and to distribute uh, content over um, a broadband TV platform. And this platform yeah. basically entails uh, the gaming consoles like the Nintendos and the Xboxes and, and the like, mm. and also... Uh, smart TVs and any other devices that uh, will handle broadband data, you know, we now have the capability to broadcast um, content, you know, uh, over that. So what we did was we formed a, a company called the Universal Hip Hop Network Channel, which is an actual channel that will go out uh, to anywhere upwards of 140 different countries. It can reach, Absolutely. you know, up to 300, 400 million people easily. And uh, we are actually uh, going to be producing and, and also aggregating content. Um, in the form of, uh, you know, reality TV shows, episodic series, movies, um, uh, music, music videos, um, original programming that we either create or we license, you know, from others. That's huge. And, um, yeah, sure, we're going to be great. Sharing, and, and we're going to be sharing in that revenue. Uh, we're looking definitely, you know, looking for, um, you know, new content uh, that's hip-hop related or has a hip-hop spirit or, you know, is promoted within yes. five elements you know, such as MCN and, you know, DJing and, and B-Boy, B-Girl in, the art and the knowledge. So we're going to be doing programming 
around that. So we're definitely, if, if you know, we're reaching out to a lot of content partners and potential, you know, content partners as well, and looking forward to working with folks from around the world that have content in the area of, of hip hop or hip hop adjacent, really. So um, they want to get that out there, and I know some people they want to know how to get in contact. Right now, uh, the best way to contact, uh, if they do have content or if they're interested in um, you know presenting some content or giving us an opportunity to take a look at it is they can go to uh they can send an email link to whatever they have to a universal hip hop network at gmail dot com and um awesome. you know we'll go through that yeah and we'll take a look at the content that way. Uh eventually we're also going to be promoting and sponsoring a film festival um and looking because again it's not just about you know the the past but it's the past, the present and the future. And, sure. and that's really what we're looking for. And we're really, we're really focused on trying to give new artists, uh, new uh, content providers, you know, new filmmakers, um, a uh, an, a shot, you know, an opportunity to get themselves uh, in the game, you know, to get some skin in the game. So this is really what we're about, you know, with that. And um, like I said, I'm looking forward to to uh, really launching this thing and and putting this channel into another stratosphere and really being on a level. Uh, of uh, some of the other stuff out there that claims to be authentic hip hop or or there you says go. that it is, there you go. but but we're going to uh, you know make sure that we hold that hold that torch up and hold that banner for hip hop, you know, from now and into the future, man. So it, I you know yeah absolutely, you know like I said, well, folks, well, well that's, that's good because man hip hop I mean with you working for hip hop this is some awesome news and for the audience, your audience to be able to hear that going on. Y'all got to make sure y'all get in touch with clientele because this, this is, this is, can, can be what hip hop means, you know? And, oh, and yeah. I, I think that's an awesome deal. Yeah. And we can, it's several platforms, platforms yeah. several platforms, the content will be beyond it, whether it's, you know, TV on demand, video on demand, ad, ad video on demand, um, you know, some of the streaming channels that are out there. Um, if you, if, just for example, if you go to, like, let's say you have, you know, a set-top box or you have a gaming console, uh, you can go to your gaming console and you have a selection of all kinds of channels there already, applications there. Um, every smart TV that comes out now, um, awesome. particularly by com- companies like LG, they already have, you know, built-in, you know, uh, channels or built-in applications there, and our channel will be on there. And everybody will be able to go and take a look at our content, view our content, That's look awesome. up the shows, and yeah. So, so they buy the so TV really, out the box, plug it in, and boom, there you are. Boom, there we are. There you go. There we are. There you there go. There we are. You know, and and you can pick and choose what content you want, how, what episodes you want to watch, uh, you know, and and watch it on the go. You can you can you can you know uh, basically save your shows, record them for later. You can. You know, binge watch. You can just wait for the new episodes to come out. However, you want to do it, but we'll have you'll have access to uh, the content that we will be creating and we'll be aggregating and and uh, you know distributing. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's what's going down. It's the Universal Hip Hop Network, awesome. and uh, yeah, it's it going is. to be coming coming to a smart TV or gaming console near you. Um, near you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we also got some other things happening with the uh, Universal Hip Hop Museum. Uh, we have at the um, New Jersey Performing Arts Center, uh, we're going to have a free concert. That's June 21st, and it's going to be with my man Rakim, you know, you know the R. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a free concert. That's a lyric. And, uh, like, it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's anybody who can get in there, get in there. Uh, it's with my man Rakim. He's going to be rocking the house. So, again, that's, a, that's June mm. 21st. At the uh, yes. New Jersey Performing Arts Center, man. So that's gonna be live, you know. Um, and it, it is so, that, that's gonna be crazy out there. And it's a free event. It's a free it's event. Free. It's free. It's free. Yes, it's free. Yeah, it's free. And and let me tell you, if anybody have the opportunity to go out of there, you're talking about peace unit and having fun. They're gonna be all in the streets. Last year, I I hosted and. We had like 6,000-plus people out there, and this was in the streets. And everybody was out there just to have fun. No fights, no stick-up kids, no nothing. They were just there, and people were rocking. They were just rocking out to all the songs that, you know, the, the entertainers that was out there that were doing. So if you have the opportunity to come out, just make sure you go to New Jersey Pack, you know, and then go. It's a free event, and you'll, you'll love it. You'll have fun. Because everybody's wow. out there for one yeah, thing, and that's it's a free event. Free event, and and also August twenty seventh, 
on the West Coast uh, at Kenny Hahn Park, uh, we're doing a, uh, a joint, uh, you know, celebration of Radiotron. Radiotron, for people who don't know, it used to be called the radio. It was a, it was a club where a lot of the kids, we used to go back in the day and, and hang out. And um, mm. you know, Carmelo, An- Carmelo Anthony, not the, not the basketball player, but the guy that ran Radiotron, or radio, he um, put it together, <clears throat> um, and he uh, really was instrumental with a lot of artists like Ice T, who first came through wow. there. Uh, um, um, Ice's girlfriend Darlene used to come through there. Uh, Antron and a lot of other DJs, Battle Cat, used to all go there and and really just hone their skills. And it was a hangout spot for a lot of you know young kids back in the day, just like uh, the Eve After Dark, just like Dudo's Music Center. And a wow. lot of kind of kind of yeah, they we all kind of got our chops. You know, up there, you know, getting he would let us just get up on stage, perform, rock the mic, you know, show our skills and stuff like that. So we're doing a celebration for him, and that's in conjunction with the uh, Universal Hip Hop Museum, and wow. it's going to be I'm, at Kenny, Kenny Hahn Park. There. It's on the 27th. It's free once again. And, oh, and it's August? Free. Yeah, August 27th. Um, and and did I say there. it was free? It's free. So you said people it's free. can come through, yeah, and eat and. And enjoy the festivities, and and you know it's going to be all the way live. So, you know, it's funny, you know, how a lot of times, you know, bad news travels like four or five times faster than good news. And yes. really, really, what we're trying to do is create an environment that people can, like you say, enjoy and also, you know, share in the culture yes. and 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 in peace and love and unity and having fun and 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 really get a sense of where hip hop really is because there's so many diverse parts to it, you know, that exactly. I think a lot of times because of popular culture and because of, you know, branding and, and, and the like, we only really get one side of it and we really need to, you know, consider and, 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 and open it up to other people to understand there's a lot more to, you know, hip hop than just one, exactly. one style or one part. One style or what, one element, you know, it's so many right. different elements. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly, exactly. And then so also um, October 6th, uh, we're going to be doing a, uh, a celebration of Queens, and we're going to be mm-hmm. doing a tribute to Queens, and that's going to be um, at the Melrose Ballroom in New York in, in, in Astoria. I think it's in Astoria. And sure. um, that's going to actually, that we're going to be uh, honoring Russell Simmons, yes. uh, Molly Ma, L O Cool J, and yeah. Nas. So, you know, that's going to be used. It's going to be crazy. So, yeah, what about the yeah, homie MC Shan? He gonna be in the building over there? He might. He he, he might. probably would. I mean, chance, chance. You know, <laughs> point. So he he's he's probably yeah. definitely gonna be there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 There's so many. Yeah, so, I mean, there's so many spots, man. And you guys are you guys are trying to cover them all, and and it's amazing that you are. You're not forgetting, you know. Um, different areas. You're doing stuff in the east. And you, the can't. West. you can't. You can't. You um, can't. You can't. And, and and you can't no no one that that is a true lover of hip hop should ever isolate and say okay it's about this place it's like it, we all every state you know borough city contribute to what this culture is and we all need to be celebrated for what we brought to the culture and once people get past that and be like listen well, we help we help move this culture forward. Then, then the respect and all of that will come into place. And I think you know what clientele and what y'all are doing, you know, informing people, especially in California, and and we're doing what we have to do on the on the West Coast, and then you have I mean on the East Coast, and then you have Chicago bringing everybody together as one. That's what matters, and that's that is what's going to hold hip hop together for many years to come. And I should, it should hold hip hop culture together for many years to come when you have that unity. And, and, and let everyone know this is what it's about. It's about us coming together because not one person, you know, did it all. We all made this happen, and that's how we begin to move forward. Absolutely, yeah. and you know, mm-hmm. and I and I think about that because sometimes, like I, what what a lot of people don't know is um, when we first started, like Wrecking Crew, mm-hmm. we had we had Run, DMC. Jam Master mm-hmm. Jay at at the club, right when they were first Looking at like y'all. really first started, and right. we learned we learned from them. We had Curtis mm-hmm. Blow, you know, my mm-hmm. man Curtis at the club. We learned from him. So it was it was like this: whether you were in the Bronx, whether you were in Queens, 
you were watching, you know, Run DMC. You were watching Curtis mm-hmm. Blow. You were watching some mm-hmm. of the, you know, first and second generation, you know, MCs and, and artists. But they were also coming to the West Coast too. So we and got watching the, same the West flavor. Coast, right, right, exactly. and, and and exactly. watching the West Coast too. And and that's what it is because you you find a lot yeah. of, a lot of people from the the East that were sort of incorporating some of the things that were on the the West Coast. And so that's this right. is why it's very important. For, for, you know, everybody to realize that, you know, listen, not just one person, but everybody, you know, all cities and states had some way in, um, you know, in, in really, like, uh, implementing what the styles or, or, or the culture and how, it, you know, things were going to move forward, you know. And so it's like when you had people like, you know, uh, NWA and people wonder why, you know, oh, what. Well, why did why why would they get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I you know there's a reason why they got into it, and I think that oh, yeah. it was oh, yeah. you know it it was very important that they did because they really changed they they were very instrumental in changing the game. And even though clientele, you know you you come from you know the second generation and all of that stuff, you know and 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 you know and I'm from the first generation. The thing is is that they opened doors up for a lot of different you know groups or or style of MCs that you know. Um, or the way that you emptied that the, the world wasn't ready for, you know. And so once the, once you did that, it's like you solidify yourself, you know, as 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 a, a person, you know, as a group who really changed the the, the game of rap within hip hop. So you know, there's a reason. There's a reason why, and it's the reason why you know it's important that you know we all celebrate, you know, everyone, you know, that that you know made hip hop to where it is today. It's very important. Yeah. Exactly. It's very important. Exactly. Well, what about? And, let me ask you guys this. Uh, what about all the subgenres? There's like, uh, okay, look at horrorcore for example. Um, thousands upon thousands of people uh, rap under horrorcore. You know what I'm saying? Where they, you know, kind of, kind of like, uh, where you, where you mix like a, a scary movie with the rhymes. You know, get right. a little mm-hmm. bit brutal with it, of like, course. Yeah. Yeah, like, like you Brother know, Lynch, Gangsta Dip and. Yeah. yeah, Bushwick Bill, Ghetto Boys, yeah. um, but that, that's a huge, huge genre of music. Um, yeah, what different, different genres. You know, G funk. But or the court, way the way that um, I look at it, the way I look at it is that, like you said, is many genres. And if we, and I'm quite sure clientele, you, you probably feel this way. The thing is, is that, and when we're talking about the elements, rap music is just an element of hip hop. So if right. people are choosing to, um, you know, bring in a new form, a new style, a new wave of rap music, then so be it. Because rap is just one element of hip hop. You have your right. hardcore, you have your down, you know, your 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 lyricists, you know, MCs. You have your party MCs. You have your storyteller MCs. That's what rap is about within hip hop. So until we get past, you know, the 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 the, the notion like. You know, rap is everything, and hip hop, it's not. It's just one element. And so, once we begin to start celebrating the different styles and the different forms, then okay, it's just rap. It's just one element. But we we just can't, you know, sum rap up as being everything that's important to hip hop. You know what I mean? So I I welcome it. I mean, it's just a, just a, another form yeah. of 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 no, rap no music, right? Now, yeah, now I mean, they'll, they'll... call it. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say there was a time when when the MC was really secondary to the DJ. Sure, and sure. The, it was, it was, because if you hear a lot of the earlier rap, you'll hear the MC referring to the DJ. That's my man on the mm-hmm. you know on the table kind of thing. And so you're right when when rap evolved into the primary, it's really just mm-hmm. one element of the other elements of hip hop and. Right. When we show a well-rounded, you know, perspective on that, then you really will enjoy all aspects of of hip hop. Exactly. Hip-hop. Yeah, the, from the hardcore to, you know, all other forms of of rap that we have now. You know, drill music and everything else that's out there. It's you know, rap is one of those one of those things that has that genre, but it's just one of the elements. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You know, and so and so yeah. a lot a lot you know a lot of times you know they they'll say okay well that's not hip hop. You know, it, it, it's like the form, the, the style of rap that they rapping. But, okay, so 
you know, I, I'm from the first generation, so I started off where we, we, we didn't have 16 bars. It was just straight up, you rhyme 30, 40, 40 bars straight without stopping. And if you had a, another crew member, they knew when to come in because they passed you the hook, and then you, you whatever hook y'all did will allow them to come in, you know, after you did whatever your rap. So the, so when Cool Herc started out with Hokla Rock and them, they were just saying, you know, different things of announcing parties or whatever. They weren't saying, like, you know, 16 bars or 20 bars or 30 bars. So rap music within hip-hop has changed over the years, even from, you know, my era, you know, and, and the way that it's done. So if, you know, people can just get past, you know, well, that's not hip-hop, you know, because of the music and the style of rap, well, rap is just an element of hip-hop. So people are allowed to, you know, um, do whatever they want. It's just that I think people, they get confused when they say, well, that's not hip-hop because they think like the core elements of what was going on is, is not hip-hop. But then just say that, that it's rap music. So, you know, I think that's where the confusion, you know, come in. You know, they just say it's rap music, you know, instead of, you know, saying, well, it's hip-hop because rap music is, it's, it's just, it's an element of hip-hop, you know, and, I don't know. I think that's that's where the confusion comes into in, into play. So I I welcome you know anyone that you know has a different style, a new style of bringing you know to the table. Because I mean, if we all out here sounding alike, you know, or or or, or rhyming the same, it does not make hip hop. Um, you know, it, it doesn't show we 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 have versatility. You know what I mean? Yeah, you need so distinction. I, I, that's, yeah, that's the key word. Yeah, right. yeah, the versatility, yeah. right? Exactly. Diversity, versatility, exactly. yeah, okay. Exactly. You know, where, you know, Mark, you're doing all this stuff, you know, with film and, and, and uh, what about music? I mean, you, it's been a minute since you put out an album. Do you have any plans for putting out an album? Oh, you right need, now. You need to make sure that what your stuff gets on that, um, on that 16 bar. Yeah, actually, you know what, it's funny you said that because I, I finished my 16 bars today. So, uh, yes. yeah, absolutely. But, but you know what, you know, Prez, I've been working so hard with a lot of the film stuff, you know, and running a few companies and, and uh, you know, working with the museum, of course, that um, music to me, I, I do it every day. So it's just a part of my yeah. DNA. You know, I mm-hmm. probably have. I probably have enough songs, you know, to do several albums, you know, and, you know, I, I, it's just a part of, you know, what I do. Um, when I get to a point where, you know, I feel like, okay, uh, I'm ready to pull some of these things together and, uh, you know, and make that happen, then, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Um, but right now, like I say, I'm, I'm so focused on, you know, making sure that these other, you know, ventures work and work well and, and we give them the just do that uh, I haven't really had time to just, you know, pull, you know, pull out the songs that I work on and just focus on, bam, you know, letting that, um, you know, be a part of, you know, an album, but hey, who knows? Maybe, maybe one day uh, that could definitely happen. Definitely. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. What, what about yourself, Shawrock? You got any um, plans to put out an album in the future? Well, you know what? I, I'm focusing more on. Um, I, I wrote a book, so uh, so after I get through the. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I, I did, and 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 it's on audio as well. So I, I basically wanted to give. You know my account of of being the first female MC and on a you know the front line with the fellas that as I know it you know from back from back in the 70s. However, I'm I'm trying to you know get the um, the autobiography slash um, movie off the ground based on the book. So um, once I get to the to June 3rd you know event or whatever, I'll sort of kind of like you know make sure that I still promote you know the Universal Hip Hop Museum, but I'll begin to start working on. Uh, the um, you know the, the the movie that I want to do you know and a documentary based on my group the Funky Four Plus One and our dealings you know with with the hip hop culture you know from its inception. So those, oh, that's, that's one of the up. things that I'll be focusing on. Yes. And, and w- yes when, uh, when is your book coming out? You no, got it's, a date for it? Or? No, oh, it's, it's out right it's now. Out. It's, yeah, it's out. It's okay, out. Okay, where can I get that? I, I got to send you all a copy. I got to send you a copy. I gotta send y'all a copy, but I, I have it two ways you can get it. It's on um it's on audiobook. You can get it from Amazon on audiobook and then I also have, you know, the hard copy. So um they have that on Amazon as well. You know, and so oh, you can get you it, go. you know, through through Amazon dot com and it's called Luminary Icon. So you know, and I oh, and I had it out for a while and, and was pushing it, you know, but then um I you know, wind up, you know, uh 
jumping on the board, you know, with the University of Hip Hop Museum. So I had been focusing on this event, like, for the last, you know, couple of months. And, and you know, and our Kickstarter, as you know, um, clientele and all the other stuff that we were doing for the museum, I sort of kind of fell back from it because I believe in the University of Hip Muse- Museum project. So once we get through this and we, you know, I'll, I'll sort of kind of like, you know, make sure that I promote, but going to begin to start working on the stuff for the book. Yeah, the yeah you, guys, you guys got a lot on the plate, and I commend you both for uh, everything you're doing for, you know, uh, for, for hip-hop, because uh, without that, it, 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 like you said, it, it'll be gone, you know what I'm saying? Without the documentation, yes. without the, you know, preservation, you know, it, it would be lost and forgotten, because like we were talking about earlier, this younger generation, they don't know, you know what I'm saying, who an LL Cool J is, or who, uh, right. unless they unless they research Yo, I was blessed to come up and and know who these people were because I saw them right. at, at the record store. I knew who who uh, Rakim was, or you know, Second Son, mm-hmm. DJ Quick, all these different people. And the kids, they need to know that. You know, we well then again, we had Rap City. You know, what I'm saying we mm-hmm. had all these different things, and, and they're yeah, those gone things now. are gone cool. though. They're gone now. You they're know, on YouTube. Like wow, but the kids don't know to look for it. You know, exactly. They don't know the to to look for that stuff. So it's good what you guys are doing. Um, now, now as far as breaking ground um, and, and the construction of this 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 museum, uh, is there any plans in the works for it uh, as of now, or is it something you guys are still trying to get going? Or what's Mark, the deal with it? Mark, you can sort of lead them out. You was you was out there at the museum, so you can you can sort of kind of like like, the, like yeah, them, well, you know give them a brief well, description. Yeah, well, 2018 is still the, you know, projected date for uh, the doors to be open, definitely. Um, But also this year, I'm glad you mentioned that, too, because this year, at the end of the year, our plan is to have the virtual museum already up and running, and people will be able to take tours, you know, and look at some of the exhibits, the, you know, Paradise Gray exhibit and some of the other exhibits that will be Mm -hmm. available already. And so, so 2016, the end of this year, we're looking to have the virtual museum up, but definitely by 2018, we want to have those doors open, man, for people to, uh, you know, to come in to uh, enjoy the museum in the Bronx. But also, um, here's another little tidbit. We've we've been working on a satellite campus on the West Coast mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. for, you know, exhibits to, you know, travel and perhaps some standing exhibits that are specific to, you know, West Coast artists. But at yes. the same time, you know, we're, we're sharing all that, too. So definitely, um, you know, and that's something that we've been working on and talking to a few of the cities to see where we would like to maybe possibly house house the museum, whether yes. it be L.A. Or, or Compton or, you know, some of the other cities that are around. So, Which um, is very yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. Well, where do you find time, uh, clientele, to handle all this stuff? You have a couple clones. Well, I, 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 man, I don't sleep, man. I just, I just blink for long periods of time. That's it. That's all I do. <laughs> I blink and then boom, I'm, I'm, my eyes are open again. I'm ready to go. Because when you do, yeah. when you're doing something that you truly, truly love, you know, it becomes something that you look forward to do. It's not like you know that you have a mission. It's something that it needs to be done, but you're loving what you're doing. So it, it's something that you like eat, sleep, and drink. You know, so you will find the time to make it happen. You will. You'll find the time to make it happen. Yep. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And what you guys are doing, you know, is is real positive, too. Right now there's a whole whole bunch of controversy uh, over hip-hop, and, um, you know, you guys are actually shedding light on the positive stuff that's going on Mm -hmm. versus, you know, the money, the cars, the, the, these little uh, rap beefs that they got going on, they make the, the mainstream media makes big deals out of little Twitter wars, I call them. Um, yeah, you know, Twitter beefs. You guys, you guys aren't, aren't feeding into that. You guys are focusing on, you know, historical aspects of it, musical aspects, art, like you said, all the elements, and uh, that's right. what's needed. That's what's right. needed. So I, again, well, I commend you, you know, hip- for doing this. Hip hop don't stop, man. I mean, and it's gonna keep on going, you know, even after, you know, long after we're here. So uh, it's important exactly. for us, you know, to a lot of times take the high road and not get, you know, bogged down. Just be mature about it and not get bogged down mm-hmm. in all the, you know, the, the the fakery, the fuckery, and all the other goofy stuff 
because you yeah. know that that comes that comes and goes, you know, and you know it, it, it might titillate people, you know, it'll, it'll you know get a rise out of them for a minute, but you know we're trying to help you know build the foundation and and do some things that uh, you know maybe you know a, a kid who's from the Bronx or who's from you know Oakland and saying, hey, you know what, man, they designed that museum. Maybe I can be an architect one day and design exactly. something, you know, like that. Exactly. Or, man, you know, they, those folks, they, you know, they help put together a, a, a TV channel. Maybe one day I can be a producer or, exactly. or a filmmaker you know, or, or an artist or a manager. You know what I'm saying? So that's really what it's about, man, because, you know, it's, it, it takes all kind to make a world. And, and, right. and, and, you, and you, give, do you give the young generation hope. You give yeah. them young generation Absolutely. hope that, listen, you know, there's other avenues or there's other ways for me to go about getting what I need to do, especially if I want to be in to the music industry. And the thing is, is that at the same time, you know, anybody, any young person, a young generation that wants to get involved, you, if anything, if, if, if they're listening right now, the only thing that you should be focusing on is to say that if I come into this game, I want to have a legacy. I want to have a legacy that can stand around from 20 to 30 years from now to say, listen, I was a part of that. I made that happen. I contribute to it. This is what my legacy allowed me to do. And I think that that's the most important thing in this world is to create an avenue for your legacy. And this is what the Universal Hip Hop Museum is trying to do for, you know, the artists, you know, past, present, and future, is to create an avenue and at the same time, you know, preserve the legacies of many who has contributed. And that, to me, I think that's one of the most important things, you know, out of all of this. Yeah. Could have said it any better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can't forget those before you, you know, um, just like uh, uh, how you guys paid homage to the ones before you. Well, uh, in, in your case, uh, uh, MC Shot Rock, there was no female MC before you, so you you have to pay homage to yourself. But but, but, uh, but but let me tell you, yeah, but let me tell you who I pay homage to. I pay homage to the, the people that has influenced me, like James Brown, like Michael Jackson, oh, yeah. like Elvis Pre- like Elvis Presley, like Millie Jackson. Like, um, you, you, know, the, uh, you know, uh, who else? Uh, Shaka Khan. These are the people that I pay homage to simply because, you know, my, my parents um, surround me by their music, their style, the way that they command the crowds, the way that they handle themselves on stage. This is the people that I pay homage to because I was influenced by them to become that MC, you know, or maybe that, that B girl, you know, from, from, from James Brown and some of the moves, you know, the way that he command the crowd. So yes, I, I, I give homage to them because I was influenced by them, you know, to become an MC and you know and, and a B girl. So there are people there are people before me that has influenced and, and my that's life. Important. You know? It's very important, you know, because uh, a lot of people uh you know, they don't pay homage to those before them. And a lot of people I've noticed, too, they don't even Google when they're picking names. I saw the other day, mm. uh, I saw a, a, a DJ Paul. Uh, he happened to be a white man now all of a sudden. Um, the DJ Paul I know is from Memphis, <laughs> and, he, and he's a black man. Wow. So it's, it's like you got to, yeah, and he, well, he's an Oscar-winning, uh, uh, he's also an Oscar winner from 3-6 Mafia. I mean, yeah, you got to do Yeah, but, your but he said he just took the name. He just took the name? Yeah, he just put the, uh, a guy posted on my wall, he tagged me in it, and uh, it's this guy, DJ Paul. And he even has the name kind of like his. Like, Paul has an A wow. with the symbol. And he has the same thing. And uh, it's it, it's crazy. And then there's another guy who's a famous producer uh, from Oakland, Ant Banks. Uh, he produced uh, a, lot of, a lot of hits for Too Short. Too um, Short, yep. And uh, there's a, this uh, young kid, he calls himself Ant Banks. Uh, wow. Kid, like, Please, you know, knowing that though, these people Aunt have Banks, a legacy. Yeah, even though he hasn't put out an album in, in a couple decades, but I mean, he still has on, an ag- a legacy. Do though. the research. I mean, there, there's wow. Discography. dot com, Rap Genius. I mean, all these different sites, you know, that have statistics and albums and Wikipedia. I mean, you know, just just get on Google and, and look that <laughs> shit up before you, you start <laughs> making names and That's true. groups. Oh and, man. You're right, wow. though. Yeah. You just gave a good lesson. You just gave a good lesson to the young listeners that may be listening to say, listen, 
Don't come into the game, you know, with somebody else's stuff. You have to be knowledgeable about, you know, what your what your legacy and your persona is going to be. You have to be very knowledgeable before you you you, you choose the name of somebody else. So you gave a lesson, which is very important because a lot of a lot of people don't know that. You know, yeah, you think don't. it's common knowledge. They don't. Um, a couple of years ago, Chance the Rapper came out uh, with a mixtape called Acid Rap. Um, and he didn't even realize that acid rap that, was a yeah. form of rap started by Esham in 1989, yeah. 1988 wow. in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. So it's like okay. you wow. got to get online. you got to research this stuff. And, and and like we were talking about earlier, a lot of these kids, they don't have guidance. They don't know who to look up to when it comes to right. music like we right. might have. You know, so, uh, you know, they got to get online and, and just look, you know, and, and do do the research. So, and, and you, I, I think that's one you, of the things. Yeah. No, and you just made a case for the museum and 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 for courses exactly. and, and that teach this and the whole nine. That's why the museum is so important, man, and important. so vital. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Definitely. So Definitely. because it'll it'll save them time in the long run. It'll save lawsuits. It'll save sampling and 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 use of you know people's words. You know, you can have a hit record but wind up having to change your name. Simply because it's somebody else's name, you know, and so yeah. it's it's kind of good to to do the research, you know, to do, to to do, do, do the research. I think one of those things happened with, um, I think, um, and, and I'm not quite sure, you know, how it went down, but I know that you had two singers. You had um, Angie B, which was Angie Stone. She later changed her name, um, Angie Stone, and then you had, I guess, uh, Angie B from the West Coast. And I think at some point somebody had to go and change it to, I think she changed it to Angie B, B Angie B, because I think it was a conflict of interest because of Angie B being a part of sequence would funk you up before she went over to Angie Stone. You know, and so a lot of times when you're out there, you, you have your name out there, you have to be very, very careful because the same thing happened again with um Jazzy Jeff, you know, Jazzy Jeff was a part of my group from the Funky Four, from from the Funky Four. But then you had Will Smith, Jazzy Jeff, and they both was under the same label. You know, once uh, Jazzy Jeff, my Jazzy Jeff, left the Funky Four. So then they had like a record dispute and lawsuits and all of that stuff. And, you know, the record companies had to wind up paying out because it was a conflict of, you know, of interest with both uh, names being under the same label, you know, so you have to be very, very careful with with that, and it sort of kind of saves, you know, the the artists, you know, time if they can do the research before, you know, coming out with their brand. Oh yeah, Absolutely. most definitely, most yeah. definitely, you know. But um, I'll tell you what, it's been a hell of a show. We dropped a lot of knowledge. You guys shared a lot of insight as far as what yeah. you guys are doing. Um, before we go, though, uh, I want you guys to make sure to give everybody all the social media. Uh, we'll start with you, uh, Shyrock. Tell everybody where they can go and check out everything. Okay. Well, well, everybody, I'm I'm on Twitter, you know, on everything MC Shyrock. That's how you can find me. But I'm I'm more importantly interested in people. If y'all can't make it to the Women in Hip Hop three day event, then go to www. u h h m Women of Hip Hop Gala. Dot Dot com and donate. Just donate. If you love the women and you want to support, just go in and just donate, you know, to the women's cause so the women can celebrate and have fun. Once again it's www dot U H H M Women of Hip Hop Gala dot Eventbrite dot com. And support. You know, donate some money so we can have a good time. Thank you. Oh yeah, thank thank you for calling in tonight. It was a huge honor. Always Good welcome up. on the show. You know, matter of fact, we'll bring you, so you on. Uh, we'll, we'll do an MC Shyrock show sometime if you're game. Al, you I like that. Out. Listen, I'm coming out to Cali. Clientele, I'm, y'all, I'm coming out to Cali to support the event on the 27th of August, okay? So I'll, I'll be out there. Right. See you there. You're cool. We'll see you there. Okay. All right. So, guys, right. listen, thank you. Thank you to your audience. And, listen, support the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Thanks for everything. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, Dropping a lot of knowledge, uh, a lot of insight, you know, um, and uh, you know she's been she's been down since uh, day one, pretty much. So uh, 
And, and here you yeah, are, I mean, Mark. She's a, uh, she's, I mean, you know, she's the queen. I mean, think about it. Everybody, all female MCs, all MCs come after her. You know what I'm saying? She's the OG, man, and, and uh, it's just an honor, you know, to even be able to talk to her and, and, and have her share that knowledge. And uh, she's so insightful and just such such a such a beautiful soul, you know. So it's real cool to you know to hear from her, and I, I enjoy working with her because you know she's so easygoing, man. But uh, yeah, it's all good, all good. Support hey, the women. You guys, you guys got a lot of support uh, at this museum. Um, you're working with a lot of different people. Uh, who are yeah. some of the people that you're working with? Right, you mentioned Curtis Blow. Uh, who are some of the others that, that you're working with? You said Rocky. I mean, you, you know. Can. Yeah, Rocky Vicano, he's the, uh, you know, the, the president of the museum, the chairman. And, uh, of course, Curtis Blow is on the board, you know, Cutman LG, uh, Grand Wizard Theodore, the first, you know, DJ to ever to ever scratch, to, to, to the inventor of the scratch. Um, and uh, so many, so many cool people, man, that are working with this thing, you know, Big Daddy Kane, Crazy Bone, because they all understand the importance of it, but they also – and these are, these are people – a lot of people we do have still that are still active too, you know, uh, you know, Q-Tip and folks like that. But they understand the importance of this, you know, venture. They understand the reach that it has. And there are a lot of other people that we're working with around the world. We have uh, one of our um, other organizations that we're connected with that uh, also, you know, represents us, the uh, Generation Hip Hop, you know, from Spain and South Africa and Italy and all these other different places that are connected. They they support the museum. They are, you know, uh, advisors to the museum, and they're, they're always promoting stuff around the world. So the reach is international. Um, it's not just a local thing. It's not just a universal. domestic thing yeah. happening. Yeah, it's not just happening in the United States. It's international, from Canada to, you know, Europe to, to Asia to Africa. Um, they're even talking about building um, – uh, a hip hop museum in China, you know, based on the model uh, in in uh, the Bronx. So a lot of stuff happening, man, and a lot of good people, a lot of cool people. And and in addition to the artists that we're working with, there's a lot of support that you know we have from venture capitalists up in you know Silicon Valley to to Wall Street to other places. But but they understand that this is hip hop, and this is this is our genre of music that we define, you know, there is no corporate money coming in to, you know, shape the narrative and, and tweak things. You know, if they can't be down with what we're doing, then they're not down with what we're doing, plain and simple. But uh, that's, that's what's up because again, this is for us. This is by us. This is ran by the artists and, and, and the people who have been the artists in, in, in this, you know, genre of music, it's controlled by us and that's the way it's going to stay. Um, and if anybody wants to reach me, you know, they can reach me on Twitter at uh, CLI underscore N underscore T-E-L or Instagram DJ underscore CLI underscore N underscore T-E-L. And any artist, like I said, that I want to get involved with the uh, 16 bars of hip hop, they can go to SoundCloud and just hashtag their song, um, hashtag 16 bars for hip hop and the number 16 bars, the word, the number four, and then hip-hop, or they can just hashtag it, uh, hashtag U-H-H-M as in, as in Mary, and uh, any, uh, you know, budding filmmakers out there or folks that have, you know, genre-specific to hip-hop, you know, kind of uh, stuff, content that we're looking for, they can send me a link through uh, universalhiphopnetwork at gmail.com. Again, that's universalhiphopnetwork at at gmail.com So that's what's up man And thank you again Prez You know what I'm saying For all the support And, and a lot of people Don't give it up to you I'm giving it up to you now For supporting the museum Because you're part of the family too man And you've been riding for us And uh, you know Really appreciate you And, and Mac J for, for what you guys do as well man Man thank you Thank you You John And uh, thank you once again For coming on the show We covered a lot of ground tonight I mean there's so much To talk about We could talk to you For hours upon hours Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean you even got a, a movie I, I forgot to talk about One more question um, What about the, the Einstein documentary uh, yes, You spoke we about on, that yeah, Last we, time you were on here T- Tell me a little yeah, bit no, About that before we go Well it's a feature film And uh, you know we're, we're in development on that And we're really um, Excited about it because every day, you know, something positive happens. In fact, I have to have an investors meeting next week. So it, we, we're really uh, doing the story of Einstein, and we want to tell the story right. 
and it's it's uh it's a movie. It's not just some old, you know, crotchety uh, you know, scientist, you know, sitting in the closet somewhere and we talking about his dad, we talking about his life and the, his legacy and the things that he went through um from, you know, his time in Germany and and you know, getting kicked out of school to being threatened by Hitler and chased around and 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 assassination attempts on on him by the Nazis all the way to him coming over to, you know, America and becoming a citizen, but also making a contribution to, you know, us, the United States winning the wars and, and um and then just the, the the amazing discoveries, the genius of, you know, um his understanding of, you know, time dilation and and uh, you know, um, you know, all the whole bit, you know, about the theory of relativity and E equals M C squared and all that kind of stuff. Which by the way, he did create those theories or come up with that, you know, be, you know in his very early, early, you know, years as a as a scientist, and he just, you know, kind of honed those and developed them more as he as he, you know, grew older and and you know was a professor in all these different places. But he was also a civil rights, you know, uh, person as well. He taught at Lincoln University. His brothers there. Uh, he was uh, friends with, uh, you know, Marian Anderson and Paul Robeson. Uh, he spoke out against racism and, and, and hatred of, you know, people of color. So there are a lot of stories we're going to tell about him that a lot of people don't know and really get at the guts of him as a person. But it's a movie. It's a feature film, and, and it, and it oh, you know, grips film. you. That's... Yeah, yeah, it grips you. It That's catches dope. you. It makes you makes you laugh, makes you cry, you know, makes you, you know, get pissed off and Maybe you want to throw a shoe at the at the at the screen, but whatever. But it's 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 you know it's a story of of his legacy and and uh, in his life and his, the relationship he had with his two wives. And he had two wives. Well, yeah, I look well, forward to that. Same, I, I really not, do. Not at the same time, but, very yeah. interesting. Yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah, no one's really done that. I mean, we've seen documentaries yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. I, that's what I thought it was initially. I'm glad no, you said no that. No movie. It's an actual you know, feature film. That's dope. It's an actual feature film. And think about this. You know, there is there is no movie that has been done about Albert Einstein. No movie. Uh, there have been a lot of documentaries, a lot of little goofy things out there about, you know, fantasy stories, but no real feature film. And you would think that it had, by now it would have been, but it's yeah. not. And we, and we have the rights to it. We have the rights to his legacy and his life. We have a personal connection because one of my co-writers actually was friends with his grandson and his son. And um, so, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's 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 going to be an exciting thing. And, you know, we're, we're still looking for other investors too. If people want to, uh, you know, come on board and be a part of it as investors, you know, we um, of course we have you know our our package that we do that we already have, but we are also always looking for you know other people who want to be a part of it. Um, there may be a scientist out there, or there may be a, an engineer out there, or or a doctor even that um, you know loves Einstein because there are a lot of people who are just fascinated with his story. Um, you know, and if they want to get involved with that, they can contact me, and uh, we'll see what's up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what's up, man. Hey, thanks for coming on the show again, clientele. I really appreciate you. Um, you've been part of uh, uh, several roundtables, you know what I'm saying, epic uh, uh, anniversary shows that we've been doing, and uh, we look forward to having you guys on, uh, you know, uh, many times in the future. We'll do some more roundtables, and, uh, you know, Shed light on this uh, Universal Hip Hop Museum because uh, it's definitely something needed. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. Much appreciated. Absolutely, brother. All right, thank you, man. Man, that's what it is. Uh, clientele uh, came through. He brought MC Shot Rock with him. Uh, both of them spit uh, some serious knowledge. Um, but before we go, uh, let me throw on a Skinny Man beat real quick. We've got a few more things to discuss. Uh, shout out to Skinny Man. If you want his production, make sure you go to UGSForLife.com and uh, click on the production link. Also, uh, you know, we got um, plenty, uh, plenty of other services, too. Of course, uh, you can have your own show right here in the Murder Master Music Show. Hit me up, Prez, P-R-E-Z, at UGS for Life. Dot com or Mac J, M A C J Y at UGS for Life dot com and inquire about having your own show slot. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Join the archive with legends like you just heard tonight. Uh, early West Coast pioneer uh, clientele and then the first ever female uh, MC, Shot Rock. So I mean that that's uh, uh, that's the type of company you're going to be in there with, along with, um, of course, you know what I'm saying people like Gangster Nip. 
Isham, Al Capone, uh, shit, Dice, uh, DOC, you know, uh, it, it goes on and on and on. South Park Coalition, um, Two Life Crew, of course. Uh, so I mean, you, you can't go wrong if you if you actually give a fuck about your resume as an artist. Um, there's no reason not to join this legendary archive. So once again, hit us up, prezugsforlife.com or magjugsforlife.com. Also, uh, be on the lookout real soon. We got a new show here coming to UGS Radio. It's going to be uh, Saturdays, 9 p.m. Central. It's called Underground Saturday Night with Mac J and Velvet Rose. It's going to be a comedy variety show. Um, you know what I'm saying? KFYB uh, is, is in the archives. Legendary show. Uh, and it's, it's, it's there. You know, um, Six is uh, actually going to be doing his own thing. He's, he's actually starting up his own uh, radio network, Redwall Radio. That's going to be coming real soon. Um, but he told us, you know, KFYB, we can pretty much... Do what we want with it. You know, we might run segments of it from time to time. You know, have as special episodes, rerun some of the classic episodes. But uh, hell of a show, and it, it's there in the archive forever. So uh, uh, shout out to uh, KFYB. Um, you know, just like uh, Underground Classics with BG. You know, hell of a mixed show. That's uh, in the vaults, you know what I'm saying? Now we got the Slaughter Hour with Scratch LDP, which he's got some Slaughter Hour episodes coming real soon. Matter of fact, he's got one that he's doing um, with a hundred of his verses. So, I mean, that's going to be dope just to hear him, you know what I'm saying, a hundred of his verses. You know, so I look forward to that uh, episode. But this uh, this new show, Underground Saturday Nights with uh, Mac J and Velvet Rose, that's going to be... Uh, you know, it's it's gonna it's gonna feature a lot of sports, a lot of comedy, um, plenty of caller interaction. We're gonna have uh, um, you know people hitting the lines, and you know I'm I'm not gonna be part of the show. Yeah, just like you know KFYB. I mean, but I might call in from time to time and uh, you know um, see see what's going on, and you know uh, it's gonna be a hell of a show. That's all I can say. It's gonna be a hell of a show. So look forward to that. But um, we got to get out of here. It's Friday the 13th. You know what that means. That means DFI Records is in the building. We're going to have to play Friday the 13th Part 5, High C. Actually, it's BKB featuring High C. And Mastermind of the legendary group, Nodis. Um, they actually have a video right now. If you go to DFIRecords.com, uh, you can check out the video. Um, you know, uh, make sure uh, make sure you support these guys. These guys, uh, when it comes to horrorcore, they actually um, DFI Records actually uh, working with a lot of legends, um, and they're networking with a lot of people. They're bringing different people together. They're doing uh, Midwest, uh, you know, the uh, uh, tours and trying to get different things popping. And uh, so, make sure you go to DFIRecords.com. It's D E I F I E D records.com straight out of Cincinnati shout out to uh, Relic Relic Killer also his son BKB um, huge supporters of the Murder Master Music Show and huge supporters of many of the legends that you grew up listening to you know what I'm saying it takes, uh, takes people like this to keep shit going so make sure to go to the website again it's deifiedrecords.com D-E-I-F-I-E-D records.com and make sure you go to ugsforlife.com while you're at it. Make sure you hit the donation button. You know, uh, if you want to keep hearing these shows, um, you know, uh, you know, hit the donation button. Just like Shadrach said about her events. Uh, same thing over here. You know, what I'm saying uh, all this stuff comes out of pocket. We're doing it ourselves. Uh, so, uh, you know, with your support, we'll keep going and keep doing it and keep doing. Uh, uh, maybe we'll do another 200 and. 63, 264 episodes, who knows um, And maybe we'll bring you more shows too Maybe it's not going to stop with just uh, Murder Master Music Show uh, Church Reality um, Underground Saturday Nights with Mac J. Velvet Rose Or 
uh, the Slaughter Hour with Scratch LDP. Maybe we're going to have other shows coming, too. So if you want to help us out, go to UGSForLife.com and hit that donation page. But for now, I want you guys to listen to Friday the 13th, Part 5, BKB High C, featuring Mastermind, DeifiedRecords.com. This is the Murder Master Music Show. Happy Friday the 13th. We're out. This your man Mastermind and Hell Raise Up, and I'm here with you know BKB and High C. Right here on the Murder Master Music Show with your host Prez. This is Friday the 13th. When everything is dark and scary, no matter what, you're always staring. Don't spill the saucer you will pay. Don't ever scream or ever say your word. Jason was my son, and today is his birthday. It's Friday. When I say killer, you say what? When I say killer, you say what? When I say killer, you say what? When I say killer, you say what?
Stabbed and tailed, chopped up and mutilated. So just think of the message. The world is a totally evil place. It'll kill you. It doesn't matter what your dreams and hopes and ambitions are. It doesn't matter if you have a new boyfriend or a new girlfriend or you've got plans for the future. You can forget those plans because you're going to wind up dead. And the sickest thing is, this isn't the final chapter. That's just an advertising gimmick. The ending clearly sets up a sequel. And what I want to know is, I wonder if they're going to be heartless and cynical enough to make the sequel because why not? They've already taken the bucket to the cesspool four times. I think the people who made this ought to be ashamed of themselves, and that's what I think. Good night. Hey, it's Flo, and this is my impression of a politician. I believe in the people, and their cars, and progressive, and the fact that you, yes, you can plug in Snapshot to save even more money for being a good driver. I also believe in Sasquatch, but more as a joke, but also kind of seriously. Safe drivers save with Snapshot from Progressive. I approve of this message, and Sasquatch, if you are real, you can totally be my running mate. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company. Snapshot not available in all states.